Yes, I know what I'm saying. I'm traveling through time. Voluntarily. George, you're insane. <laughs> Which probably wasn't in there, but I felt like saying it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony. Bob and George. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> he knew I was going to have to do that to you. <laughs> And this is our thoughts. <laughs> and this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic. Season 5, Episodes 25 and 26, The Cutie Remark, Season Finale. Wow, and it's nice seeing all the villains again. Hello, Green Chrysalis! Not exactly what we wanted, but it works! <laughs> it, it kind of works. Also... I actually want to see a spin-off of that first timeline she goes back into, mainly because I want to see more of Maude and Pinky kicking ass. Yeah, that was pretty awesome right there, that they both just jumped up and pulverized a boulder. Mm-hmm. What's really funny is the outfits they're wearing, including Rainbow Dash, just actually remind me of the Republic City police outfits, you know, the metal benders from The Legend of Korra. Specifically on Mod and Pinkie Pie. Well, Earth, Metal. And what's really interesting is watching everyone trying to map out how the timelines work, how certain things have happened, how this could have possibly happened, how we got the Discord timeline and we still had Luna. Just all kinds of fun, as we made alludes to in the beginning. Baba and George, I hate time travel. <laughs> but it's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And yay for the return of Starlight Glimmer. I mean, we've only been waiting all season. Mm -hmm. Kind of like our first quote-unquote season-long villain. Because <laughs> you can actually see her in the background of several episodes. Yes, and at the same time, this is basically a repeat of the season 3 finale. Let's take a star swirl the bearded spell, mess with it, and gum up everyone's cutie marks. <laughs> Except I think this one is much cooler and, of course, less rushed. Of course. Some people are kind of like saying Starlight Glimmer's becoming good or less evil, <laughs> felt kind of rushed. I'm like, uh, well, perspective-wise, we don't really know how long that end set of sequences actually is. We know Twilight comes back, there's a council meeting, and then they decide to help her. We don't know how quickly those other scenes happen. That could be over a week's time, a month's time, or even just a day. We do not know. They do not give us a time scale for that. And we also do not know how much time they truly spent trying to wreck Rainbow Dash's race. And I think seeing the consequences of your action, especially when they're so devastating, would make you go, shoot. Because she's not an evil person, she just doesn't understand what she's doing is completely wrong until she's shown that, whoa. <laughs> yes, like most good villains, she's doing what she thinks is right. She's not evil for the sake of evil. So which was your favorite timeline? Well, considering that I'm a Luna slash Nightmare Moon fan, I was glad to see that one. Except for the annoying part of, why wasn't this one first? <laughs> if you break up the elements of Harmony, the first thing that should happen is when Nightmare Moon escapes, Nightmare Moon wins. <laughs> Unless Celestia found six other ponies to wield the elements of harmony, or for some reason was able to wield them all herself again, and we didn't bother with getting a questing party together. Well, it's amazing what little things change big things in the future, so we don't know what kind of changes Starlight's thing really affects. It does break up the main six, but it could change other things. It could maybe not break up the main six. It could make it so they find each other in a different way with different cutie marks. We do not know. We just know that that event changes a lot of things in the future. And based on what Twilight says, any friendship she breaks up would actually cause similar consequences in the future. Yes, it's the whole butterfly wings thing. Yeah, and Twilight basically says that all friendships in Equestria are important because the friendships in Equestria are what keep Equestria strong. Which is one of the reasons the question was probably weak when Luna was gone. Yeah, breaking up a sisterhood bond is pretty heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. But it also makes me think of the fact that um, the villains may not have been drawn to Equestria with the main six not being the way they are because the trouble seems to seek out the main six. So without the main six, would trouble still seek out Equestria? Well, let's see. There was still trouble without the main six because Discord 
and Sombra are both repeat villains. Hmm. Huh. Well, going back to the Nightmare Moon timeline, I love the facial animations they gave her this time. It was just so detailed and articulate. <laughs> Very. I do want to know why two alicorn princesses were walking back to the castle map, though. <laughs> Especially when they had winged ponies falling behind them. <laughs> yes. You have wings. Your entourage has wings. Timberwolves do not have wings. I vote for flying. And what's really interesting is only in one of the timelines did Twilight ever get recognized as an alicorn. You would think Nightmare Moon being, I'm the only ruler of a quest would go... That's another alicorn. <laughs> kind of should have been happening every single time. Uh, and also, what would have happened to Cadence in the Nightmare Moon timeline? Because Cadence was actually still around. We just didn't know about her when Nightmare Moon came back. Well, the question is, oh, uh, no, because she was already ascended when Twilight was a foal. So mm -hmm. scratch that. Because there's a lot of key things here. We do know that probably without her cutie mark, I believe, I would have to look back at the Cadence episode, um, she wouldn't have met Shining Armor without the Rain Boom either. So those two wouldn't be together in that particular timeline, I don't think. Well, it was pretty clear they weren't together in the Sombra timeline. Or they were together and Cadence was too weak. And, well, Cadence, we already saw that Cadence was too weak on her own because she lost the shield. Well, you try holding that shield for that long and see how you feel. <laughs> It's a lot of talk about timelines and how this would do this. What? Un who? Huh? I do uh, time travel evil twitch twitch. <laughs> yes. And let's not forget two favorite points. So Twilight and Spike are unaffected by all the changes. She doesn't unbecome a princess. She doesn't lose her cutie mark. She still has all memories of the original timeline. And okay, so every time she recasts the spell, it also grabs Starlight and pulls her along so they can thwart each other. Then where the name in Celestia is Starlight in all these in-between times? Where is she getting sent every time Twilight gets pulled back? Or is she staying in the Cloudsdale timeline the entire time and she just gets pulled backwards every time Twilight recasts the spell? Hmm, good question. Though another thing that I can kind of answer is I think the spell in the scroll connected to the castle tree map is what's keeping certain things in order like uh, Twilight and Spike being unaffected by the timeline changing around them and people would say well I can understand Twilight but how was Spike well Spike was the first one to touch the um, spell scroll after she threw it away and I'm thinking that's what is keeping Spike from being affected because he is now um, part of the whole spell. If he hadn't have touched it, Twilight would be the only one affected. All right, now for a nitpick not related to time travel. Cloudsdale. Earth ponies cannot rest on clouds, so I would think neither can dragons because we have had Spike slide. There were several scenes where neither Spike or starlight were illuminated by a magic glow but they were resting on or in a cloud well starlight's a pegasus a pegasus Pooey. a unicorn i think she learned the cloud walking spell and twilight most likely cast the cloud walking spell on spike after the first him falling through the clouds incident just saying uh, other than time travel or anything else do you have any problems with the story not overall with the story more of the order in which the alternate presents were presented. As I said, the Nightmare Moon one should have been first because I would have done them in order of villains defeated. So I would have done Nightmare Moon, Discord, Samra, then Tirek. Because obviously Tirek had to be last because that was the worst because hmm, the power of four alicorn princesses isn't enough to take this guy down. And obviously Twilight would have never become the fourth alicorn princess, so... Yeah. That also reminds me of um, someone's interpretation of the last time they go to where Starlight is showing what's going on with her actions in the future and how it's all desolate and everything like that. Someone interpreted that as being a reflection of how Starlight actually feels about her world, how desolate it is, and the fact that she could never have friends because something's going to take them away from her and stuff like that. And it also reflects how desolate Twilight feels about the fact that she can't get out of this loop of destruction. 
Except that a timeline shouldn't be a projection of one's feelings. If this is an artistic interpretation. Okay, artistic interpretation. That was not stated clearly enough. And a little bit of energy saving on the part of the animators and the story writers that almost every single time, actually I think every single time, we saw the other adult ponies of the main six, they were wearing some sort of armor, tactical gear, uh, scouting clothing, camouflage, so that we didn't see what type of cutie mark they ended up with instead. Hmm. That also reminded me about some of the details on some of the ponies. Like, did you see how beat up Rainbow Dash actually was in the first timeline that was shown? She was basically missing a wing and half her ear was gone. <laughs> and she had a scar across her eye. <laughs> yeah, pretty brutal for a kid's show. Mm-hmm. And that reminds me of this thing that I knew instantly would be made into a GIF, and I was right. And no, it's not GIF. Moving on. <laughs> there were these in the um, King Sombra timeline. Yeah, the first timeline. Uh, there's these two ponies in the background, one from the King Sombra side and one from the Royal Guard side. And they're basically doing a slap fight with their front hooves. <laughs> I'm like, yep, yeah, that's so being made into a GIF. <laughs> mm -hmm. I saw that too. I'm just a little sad that Shining's was fighting for the opposition. Timelines will be timelines. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just glad Twilight didn't actually get to see that. Mm-hmm. Though that does remind me of another little animation detail someone caught. Sombra's cape was flapping in such a way that it showed his flank. No cutie mark. <laughs> so either he had one and it was erased when he gained that evil power, or he's not an actual pony and just resembles one. Well, he's larger than most of the ponies. He's the same size as Celestia and the ambassadors from Saddle Arabia, who are more horse-like. Sombra's proportions are also more horse-like than pony-like, and his horn does not look like a typical MLP Universe unicorn horn. Very much looks more like it's part of his crown, and so he could perhaps not even be a unicorn at all, and all the power comes from the coronet. Hmm. So since I mentioned it before, what did you think of the resolution of the episode and how it was handled? Um, feels a little rushed, and also you don't get to just magically become friends with the main six and Spike. You know, Twilight didn't get to just say, well, you already have seven. If her penance was to go make a friend, you can't go, you already have seven, so you're fine. Though I loved how Rainbow Dash was totally against it. You could see her in the background of everything going, come on, really? And then slowly warming up over the scenes. Which is more reasonable, because she drove everyone crazy in the season opener. And from everything that Twilight had to tell them from the season finale, she tried to wreck all of their lives. But... We have a history of forgiving villains, so... Yeah, like I said before, um, we don't really don't know how long those end scenes actually take. It's a lot of montaging, and montaging can be of any kind of event, even like five minutes long, montaged into five minutes long. So we really don't know how long those events take, but yeah, a lot of people say that too. It's like, we'd rather this have taken a while, and they keep pointing back to the movies that you shall not um, conceive as of existing. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. And how Sunset's Redemption arc was pretty good because, well, she had three movies. <laughs> Who? <laughs> yes, Aloysius. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should move on to the Chrysalis timeline. Yay, Return of the Changelings! <laughs> Uh, and some people were like, I don't think it's the same voice actress for Christmas. I'm like, yes, it is. They just removed a lot of the modulation. They gave her voice in Cantalot Wedding. Which is quite allowable because it was a different timeline. So, you know, even the changelings could have developed somewhat differently. Mm -hmm. Also, it's nice to see Zakura again. <laughs> I love the hairstyles. And Zakura in charge and kicking flank. In season six, we need more Zakura. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nitpick, though. How? In the name of Equestria, would Zakora know that Twilight and Spike Glowing means that they're from a true timeline and Zakora's timeline should not exist? Yeah, when technically, based on what we know, her timeline is just as valid as Twilight's timeline. Yes, thank you, Dot Plevises. 
That's the only problem with multiple timelines. Every single one of those timelines is valid, and it's actually more likely that all these timelines already existed before this spell. They're just being shifted between timelines as things change in the past. So, <laughs> so it's less like they're traveling through time and more like they're opening up dimensional gates and sliding between them during the same time period as Twilight's present. For more on this, go watch, uh, is it Turtles in Time or Turtles Through Time? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> that fun crossover episode where everything led back to Turtle Prime. Oh, yes. That one, that's a good, yeah, go and watch that. It's one of the episodes, I believe, in the 2000, I think it was when it first started, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboot, unlike the current 2000. 13 or 14 one that currently is out now and still going yeah so this is one or two reboots ago <laughs> yeah the main difference is that one was 2d animated and this current one is 3d animated and we spent very little time in the discord timeline mm -hmm. i think it's because it was getting near the end of the second part so yeah so we're running out of time to see timelines but I would have liked to have known a little more of how Discord overcame Celestia and Luna and had them as his personal clowns. Another nice touch there is the fact that the Luna shown is actually the smaller version of her. The one we saw right after she came back from being Nightmare Moon. I was going to say with all the changes in the timeline, it's possible that this was a timeline where, heck why not, um, she didn't ever become Nightmare Moon and... Celestia and Luna didn't find the elements of Harmony, so they weren't able to defeat Discord. Because they defeated Discord before she ever became Nightmare Moon, and they got the elements of Harmony before they defeated Discord. It could also be a timeline where Celestia managed to um, convert her sister back. And because it was just her, it's taking longer for Luna to recover her full strength. Also possible, and my theory is immediately full of holes because the events that I'm describing were way before Twilight was born, therefore a change in Twilight's life should not affect stuff that happened before she ever existed. Mm -hmm. So anything more you want to go over? I think I'm willing to stop here. <laughs> yeah, because both of us could probably spend hours talking over, uh, so how did this timeline work, and if this happened, and then this, and then this, and then... Oy, people are going to write essays on this. <laughs> they probably are, but none of our subscribers are going to sit through a video that long of us blathering, so... <laughs> oh. Well, your final thoughts? Enjoyed this. Was glad to see Starlight back. Not usually a fan of time travel. I love being able to get all the villains to basically have cameos in the episode. Uh, was a little disappointed that... This wasn't a finale of the whole Table Tree Castle map, you know, that the table didn't summon the entire main six somewhere, and that we still hadn't seen or talked about or needed to look for the treasures mentioned in the season opener. But now that we have Starlight on our side, and she is a powerful unicorn now on the side of good combine that with the fact that we haven't had a summon all six ponies table tree castle map since the season opener that gives us some scope for seeing this stuff in season six yeah you mentioning that just made me realize that when they were writing season five they knew they were going to have season six so i'm thinking we might actually have a multi-season arc going on here <laughs> and this is just the resolution of half of it so in another 26 episodes when they release that there's probably still ramifications of what Starlight did. Like, it could affect the tree table castle map in some way that we don't know of yet. Also, it could have made smaller changes to the timeline because the act of observing something is said to change the act itself. So the mere fact that Twilight and Starlight went back in time could have smaller ripple effects. Mm-hmm. Well, overall, I liked all of it. I didn't really mind the little, like, well, she was kind of fast. No, I enjoyed it. I laughed at certain times. I helped my also going, I know they'll never do it, but I want to spin off of that Sombra timeline. I want to see Maud and Pi fighting and kicking tail. <laughs> it would just be so cool because that one little moment was like, oh my god, I want more of that. <laughs> that was an awesome moment. Oh, and somehow that reminded me, nitpick on Starlight. You couldn't write your best friend a freaking letter when he went off to Canterlot? <laughs> also, Book Jenga sounds like an awesome game, except for the part where all the books fall and get damaged. 
<laughs> well, as you can tell, we enjoyed these two episodes and can't wait for season six. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episodes 25 and 26, The Cutie Remark, Season Finale. Thanks for listening. If you like Lex's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions. And also has a Patreon. All links in the description.